Like an, it's an unsung hero. A little bit, yeah. It's the unsung hero of Bard Galaxies. Has it got a cool name? Uh, it doesn't. It's just NGC4579. Pretty boring, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't even have a cool name. We should name it. Yeah. How can we name it? Why don't we call it the Unknown Galaxy? Yeah. The Unknown Galaxy. Today we are visiting M58, which I'm super excited about because it's a barred galaxy and I love barred galaxies so much. Why? They are beautiful. Oh, they're what? just gorgeous. Do you not think they look gorgeous? Better than spirals? Yeah, well, a barred galaxy usually has a spiral as well. So it's like two for one, you know, you got like the bar and the spiral, so it's extra beautiful. So it was discovered in 1777 by Messier. And at that time, it was the most distant astronomical object known. They didn't know that it was the most distant object known until the 1920s when Hubble came along and started measuring redshifts and actually found out that it was the most distant. So it was one of those unknown knowns. So you get a lot of known unknowns, things that we know that we don't know, but you don't get a lot of unknown knowns, things that we don't know, but we still know of. Because there's no it's knowns, unknown unknowns, known unknowns and unknown knowns. So it's, it's a cool fact. Yeah. It was, it's like, a, it was like a record holder, but we didn't know it was the record yeah, holder. Yeah, exactly. For ages it held that, but nobody knew about it. Why don't we call it the unknown galaxy? Yeah, the unknown galaxy. But the really cool thing about the unknown galaxy... Uh, yeah, I'm like totally it. sticking with it now. It's going to be called that. Yeah, yeah, I'm running with it. It'll be on Wikipedia soon. Yeah. It has something really rare in its centre. It has what's called a nuclear ring. People might be familiar with rings anyway. So there's ring galaxies, stuff like Hogue's object, for example. It has a beautiful, you know, hundreds of thousands of light years across star forming ring. But here I'm talking about right in the central regions. Instead of hundreds of thousands of light years, I'm talking like a hundred light years across nuclear ring. Cameron et al. did a big atlas of all of these objects that have nuclear rings. This is a generic sort of sky survey image of the galaxy, uh, just black and white sort of photon counts. And then on the right, what they've done is they've zoomed in and this is a UV image so they can really peer right into the center and see what's going on. And you can see this beautiful ring of star forming things right in the very center of the galaxy. And if you compare the scale, so this is 20 kiloparsecs, that's 20,000 parsecs, you know, sort of across is that galaxy and they've zoomed into only a hundred parsecs. So this is this is tiny right in the center of the galaxy itself. So they think they form when you get gas funneled to the center of the galaxy. So that could either be by a bar or by the spiral arms, something in the galaxy that's literally just funneling gas right into the middle. And as it does so, it loses angular momentum. And what happens is it gets trapped in this sort of resonance right in the center of the galaxy. And so you get a lot of star formation being triggered there because there's a lot of gas there. So you get this nice star forming ring right in the center. The central regions of a galaxy are so dense and compact and so bright, usually there's so many stars in there that you just can't pick out the nuclear ring. This blue color means there's lots of star formation happening. And the red color means that actually there's not a lot of star formation happening. But if there's a lot of star formation happening in that ring, then it's really easy to pick out in the UV where lots of young hot stars give out a lot of UV radiation. So that's how they've managed to find this one. So that's the big question. Are they actually rare? Or is it actually that we just can't find them very easily? You can get them in all shapes of galaxies, of various different sizes. It doesn't correlate with how long the bar is or how wide the bar is. And in fact, only about 20% of the galaxies that have the nuclear ring have bars as well. So there's no correlation there really at all. Ring is a ring of stars. Yeah, new stars. So as you funneled that gas in, you've provided fuel basically in an area where there wasn't much fuel before because it's been used up already. And so when it gets trapped in that resonance, you end up with this like area where it's just perfect for star formation to occur and you end up with this beautiful clear ring of star forming. This guy is the one we were just looking at. So this is our unknown galaxy. This is M58. And then you can see loads of other different examples that they found as well. I mean, as someone who loves beautiful astronomical pictures, it's great <laughs> to look at. It's not like classic beauty. This is beauty for a galaxy lover. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like, this is mess that means physics is happening, which is the most exciting mess, right? So you have stuff like, like this ring here, as you can see the, the big clumps of star formation. So, Maybe if that does have a bar, maybe like it was funneling in a lot to here and a lot to here. You have stuff like this where it's like they've argued that there probably is a ring here, but actually this kind of looks like mini spiral structure. You have stuff like this where it's inclined and you've got the ring as well. And you can see that there's really nothing going on in the center there. There's like a dearth of star formation there, which is really cool. So there's just so many different types, even though they're all the same object class, you know, they're all different. I think I've thought of a new name for M58. Instead of the unknown galaxy, mm. we could call it the ring bearer. 
you, like that's the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> Literally, you could not have said anything that made me happier than the Ring Bearer Galaxy. That's a cool name. That is a really cool name. That's better than unknown even. Yeah. Okay, the Ring Bearer, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> if you'd like to see even more videos about Messier objects, well, you've come to the right place. Check them out on the channel. I'll also include a link to more videos with Becky. If you'd like to check out something different, why not check out Objectivity? That's another channel I do dedicated to science treasures like We'll have a look at this. This is Isaac Newton's death mask, a cast of his face when he died. It's an amazing thing to see. We've also got these treasure chests. One of my favourite things, this Venus orrery. It's over 150 different objects featured on the channel already. That's objectivity here on YouTube. I'll include a link on the screen and in the video description. That's it. That's all for now. You can go about your business. <laughs>